What is going on, people? I get this question all of the time. It is one of the probably the one of the most important things I can tell you. How to stay committed for the long haul. If you like this information and you like the channel, be sure to tap that button or that button and make a donation. Now, with that said, let's get into it. Let's get into it. One of the things that I've observed in the last six years of doing this, being here on YouTube, conducting workshops, doing the Facebook groups, doing all of these things, is there are people who give up too easy. And when they give up, it's like everything that you learn goes to the wayside because you stop doing. And I had a very interesting conversation with a friend, you know, my friend with the cookie business. And we were talking about it and I said, you're one of the few people that listen to me. She's probably going to get that cookie business up to six figures, probably within three to five years. But this is what she did. Everyone said, because everybody wants to go big Willie style, open up a store, get this fancy website, spend all of this money, spend all of this money, spend all of this money. So what they do is they bust their wad like it's just, oh, and they make, you know, that cum face. Oh, and then after that, it's like, they get sleepy. They get really sleepy. And when they wake up, their business is gone. You know what I'm talking about. Their business is gone. So what about if you make love to your business very slowly? You court your business. You actually wait to have sex for a little while. I know, coming from me, that's kind of crazy. But you actually wait to have sex and you was like, okay, we're, we're going to go on a little date. And the date is, I'm going to work on that business during the weekend. And then, oh, a few months later, it starts to get more serious. And then you start to devote more time. You don't burn out. This is what happens to many people. They burn out. They, they put up forth all this energy. They put forth all this effort. They have all of these bills. They're trying to make all this money. They're trying to make it happen so quick. And skeet, skeet, the watch busted. Take a nap, world keeps spinning, wake up, what they had is gone. So you got to learn how to stay committed. Now, one of the things that helps you stay committed is having immediate goals, uh, short-term goals, and long-term goals. Three sets of goals. Also, you have to do this. You got to relax. And this is one of the reasons that if your life is fine, you've got all the money you need, you're doing well, that's the time to start your business because you're not pressed. Unfortunately, many people, myself included, we started my first, well, actually, let me step back. In my first five businesses, I started when I was in the military. So I spent too much money, but, you know, since I was in the military, I couldn't quit my job. I learned a lot while I still had steady income. And yeah, so okay, I'm not actually being incongruent. I don't want to be incongruent because I don't want to say, hey, do this and I didn't do this. You know, I don't want to get into all that. But essentially, build your business while you have a job and income. Or if, you know, you just decide that before you want to start your business, if you get yourself out of debt. Because today, in today's world, you don't have to spend an amazing amount of money to start a business now. Conundrum Publishing was started for 285 bucks. I did not put any more money back in the business for 24 months. And actually, let me just say, I didn't put any money. The business put money in the business. The, the business was like, you know, feeding itself. It's just like, yeah, baby, here, give me, I need a little cash. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's some over here, some over. So it was able to support itself as well as me. You could do the same thing. Going back to my friend with the you know, cookie business. And I told her this last night, and I'm going to tell you this today. If you stay committed, because, number one, as I broke it down, it's like you see results every month. Money in your bank account, that's on the profit side. You make a profit every month. You're getting close to, it's like, ooh, I can do some stuff. Let it stack. <clears throat> Put it in your business account. Build it up. And then when you've got 10, 15, 20, 30 grand in there from your business, then, okay, maybe we can expand. Maybe we can do this stuff. Maybe we can, you know, at that point, because right now you're working hard, but you're making close to two grand a month 
on the side on top of your 90 something thousand dollar job. Now that's how you get ahead. Many people would quit the job and go into the cookie business full time. I actually disagree with some things. And on this channel, there's many people like, hey, should I quit my job and do my hustle full time? Should I quit my job and do uh, storage auctions full time? And I've always said no. And not because you don't have talent. And it's not because you're not a good person. You have no fucking experience. That is the big problem. But as you stay committed to the long haul with the short term goals, the immediate goals, and the long term goals, and as you start, okay, this is done. 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 You do all of that, you begin to see traction. You begin to feel the results. It's one thing to see the results, but when you start to feel the results, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, baby, I'm feeling those results. Then it's a beautiful thing. You're doing what you need to do. Because part of the reason is it's hard for people to stay committed for the long haul is they're doing this. I got $150. Spin. It's just, there's such an immediate urge to spend because too many entrepreneurs are trying to live off the business for the business can walk. Imagine your business is a baby. I don't care how bad you want that baby to walk. That baby's going to crawl until that baby is ready to walk. That's your business. Until enough revenue, until enough whatever comes in, enough experience on your side. Until that happens, it's not walking. It's just not happening. And that's usually going to take many months to a year. And the good news is, you know, back in the day, it was three to five years for your business was spinning off enough profit to support you. You can do this in a year now. Which for many people is still, whoa, that's too, yo, yo, Glenn, oh, yeah, the dog, that's too long. I need this to happen next week, you know, because, uh, I got to get that new uh, Porsche, you know, because I looked at it and my financial and spiritual father told me that if I sit here and go, um, then I'm going to get it. If you got the right DNA and you got a really rich father or mother, yeah, that might be possible. But if you're regular average folks like us, we got to work for it. You got to build it. And also, you got to be committed. Nothing's going to happen without a commitment. I had a issue on the personal side that I was committed to seeking a resolution. I had several people tell me, you can't do it. Legal people, like, no, you can't do it. This ain't going to work, blah, 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 blah. Well, I stayed committed, and I kept punching, and I kept punching, and then, boo yow. I got that secret sauce, got that magical pill. And even some of the elite people, what the, oh shit, you can do this. Because if I had given up when they said, and you know, many of them were really nice, and I was like, well, I don't know if this is going to work out for you. Well, yeah, yeah, Do your own work. It is, to, in my estimation, it is better to go forward and fail and know, and know with certainty if your ideal concept is valid or not. Because if you don't, that's going to stay all up in your system and it's just going to bother you and it's going to create angst and resentment and you're just like, I did this. I did this. Wow. I did this. I did this to myself. I didn't go forward. Do you want to be, say, 70, 80, 90 years old? Sitting on your rocking chair, not sitting in your rocking chair, but sitting on your rocking chair, on your front porch, looking out at the grass and wondering what could your life have been if you had stayed committed to something just long enough for it to bear fruit. Because like I said, I was telling her, and I'll tell you, I've seen people, like here in YouTube land, Facebook group, there's people I've seen for years, and they're just like, Flither over here, flither over here. It's like, hey, party over here, party over here. Oh, this is the latest and greatest, and this is the latest and greatest. You're not going to build anything substantial when you continue to do things like that. You're going to continue to fall short of your expectations, of your goals, because you can't stay focused and committed. 
Because this YouTube thing, I fucking hated it in the beginning. But it worked. It's like I didn't like doing YouTube, but I liked the results. And in turn, I liked, I began to love doing it. I began to have fun with it. And I began to make it my own and own this bitch. Well, actually, I'm leasing this property because YouTube is like, all right, we're going to let you do this. And, you know, we're going to store a little cheese your way. But, uh, yeah, that's all we're going to do for you. So, essentially, you've got to stay committed. you got to stay committed. You have to really know what you want, which actually should have been the beginning of the video. you got to know what you want. This is critical. This is of mucho grande Grand Canyon importance. This you got to know what you want. Now, if you don't know what you want, you need to try as much shit as possible. So something will like, ah, that's what I want. Because you may not know what you want until you try stuff. Because everyone's like, what's the best thing to sell? Well, what should I do? Amazon or should I do eBay or should I do Craigslist? Should I do this? Well, number one, what kind of life do you want to have? What kind of life do you want to have? How do you want to live? How do you want to enjoy your days? How, how, and no, very few people ask that question. I asked that question a long time because I was like, I get in trouble when I have a job. I don't even know. And this is funny. I was having this conversation with a friend who was a recruiter. and I was like, I don't, He was telling me something. It's like what person puts it on, on their resume that they've had their business for a long time. That a lot of times they ignore them because they know that these people will be incompatible with a work environment because they're used to doing things their own way. And that is me. And you know, people are like, well, why do you do this and why do you do that? Because if I had to get a job, I don't know how that would go. And I'm going to tell you something that I've never told anybody before. And you can go ahead and laugh. I really don't care. When I was working on the first book, I had X amount of money in savings. And I was allocating myself a certain amount of money to live on. So what I did, because I was chasing this dream of writing a book, I went over to Walmart, Target, Home Depot, Walgreens, and what else was that? It was something else. All on the same day. Went to the little kiosk in the Home Depot. Man, I was like there for an hour. I think Target, I was like, it, it took, it was a lot of time to fill out all those questions. Do you know not one of those motherfuckers called me back? Not one. And I did not put that I, I didn't put that I owned it. No, I just, I, I just like, hey, you know, you know, I worked in the warehouse. That's what I put and I put references and stuff. I did not put that I own the business because it was like, they're not going to hire you saying you own the business to work for the, because I was just looking for some, some extra change. Because, you know, in my mind, it's like, if I make it extra two to four hundred bucks a month you know working really part-time and get dedicating myself to the book that i would be good no one hired me i didn't get one freaking call back not one and i was like oh well i need to keep writing this book bitch so even looking and that's the last time two that was 2009 it was 2009 that i did that and <laughs> yeah it's just like I don't want a job, and a job doesn't want me. So we agree on that. <laughs> we agree on that. But the whole point is, if I didn't have that goal, and I had a two-year goal. I had a two-year goal for the writing thing. It's like, I got two years to make this work. And I got rid of anything that could have gotten in the way. So that's how it happened. And, you know, this is another part. Work, effort, and sacrifice. Many people are... Just trying to get, you know, million dollar incomes with minimum wage effort. And that's why, you know, you know, people's like, well, you know, we need the minimum wage. I don't want no fucking minimum wage. I'm not like looking for some fucking minimum wage in my life. Um, mm -mm. No, 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 no. That That's not the way that I would even have someone to expire to want something like that for, their, for themselves. If you got to do it, your immediate job once you get that minimum wage job, is how the fuck do you get out that minimum wage job? That's your next step because if you just look at what's happening, you know, it's weird. The things that are very important, food, fuel, housing, it's very expensive. And if you want a certain quality of life, and I'm not saying that if you live in 
a low income neighborhood that your life's going to be horrible. What I am saying is if you live in a low income neighborhood, you're going to be exposed to a bunch of folks who don't give a fuck about shit, who wreck shit, who may get into drug wars and shoot you in your head. And I know people are like, well, crime happens everywhere. Yes, it does. But do you want to be in a neighborhood where there is two crimes per year or do you want to be in a neighborhood where there's two crimes per fucking second? Because you're right. Same things. People get mur murdered, murdered in wealthy neighborhoods. Uh, people, you know, a lot of shit happens. I'm even damn convinced that I'm living next to a madam. I I'm, I'm about 100% certain that this girl's turning tricks. But, you know, they all drive up in, like, BMWs, Mercedes. Uh, actually, I saw a Rolls Royce over there. So, I'm like, I guess she's that high-class call girl. But, nevertheless, that's still a little shady. It's a little skanky. But, it happens. So if you want to avoid that stuff, because, you know, if you look, I got a video on here. It's like, why well, I refuse to live in the hood. It's just you get exposed to shit that put, you have no fucking control over. Uh, one day when I was living in the boarding house in the West End, I was walking home and uh, coming from one of my jobs. Not bothering anybody. Tired as hell. This Impala that's full of dudes. It's just and smoking weed. It rolls by me, and they just start yelling all this stuff out the window. And I'm just kept my head down, just kept going. I was like, you know, ignoring them. And then the music didn't stop. But, you know, when you hear music and someone's driving as it goes away, the music should have been fading. Now, the music was getting louder. And I was just like, whoa, because they were coming back. And something, maybe it was a cosmic signal, maybe it was God, maybe it was my grandmother, it was something. Something I said, run. So I took off, and all of a sudden, I was able to leap over this nine-foot fence, and I just laid prone right there on the ground, and they were looking for me. It's like, where that motherfucker go? Where that I didn't even know these people. I was walking home from my job, and I was that fucking close to becoming a statistic for doing nothing. So that's one of the pitfalls living in the hood. You don't have to be doing shit to get capped in the hood. You don't have to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. You could just be simply living and existing. And that's why I was like, I'm not fucking living over there. So, as that sideway, you know, because I just went way to the left with that. It all goes back to you staying committed to whatever you want to do. And I know, I understand there are many, many people who have no clue to what they want to do. Go out and get a lot of experiences. Try new stuff. Go jump out of the plane. Skydive. Sky dive. Go hiking. Meet people. Uh, do Uber. You'll meet people. So that's the deal. That's how you stay committed for the long haul. Immediate goals. Short-term goals. Long-term goals. These goals must be written down. You must look at them on occasion or every day. Preferably every day. You, you must think about it. And then create execution steps that hey, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. Even if you can only do $25 worth of steps per week over a course of a month, that's $100 worth of steps. Over a course of a year, that's $1,200 worth of steps. As long as you're moving forward, you're okay. When you ain't doing shit, you can't grow. So, all right, I'm doing something new, you know, because actually every time I come up with an idea, I just throw it out on there. If you made it this far, to the video I got a deal for you it's kind of crazy but I'm going to give you a coupon to the Udemy pass because as the Udemy thing is going to grow I'm going to let that roll so essentially this is what you have to do you have to request it it's not below the video All everything I have for sales below the video but you're going to have to request this so it's like this is what you do two things in the comments, put, I'm a motherfucker. <laughs> yes, I, yeah, I'm doing this. In the comments, put, I'm a motherfucker. And then send Amy, Amy at Hustlers Food. Hey, I want my discount. The Udemy Pass is 500 bucks. So if you do, I'm a motherfucker, and you send Amy that email, I'm going to do the Udemy Pass for three seventy five. Now, what is the Udemy Pass? You have access to every course on Udemy that's already up there, and whatever the hell I put up there in the future. That's the Udemy Pass. It's not associated with Hustlers University, but 
I'm doing this in the video stuff just to see how many people get this far because my videos are long as hell. I don't care because I've been doing it this way since 2009 and I'm going to continue to do this way until the end of freaking time. Yes, I'm a poet and didn't know it, but that's the deal. I'm a motherfucker in the comments because all the people who hate profanity, I I'm trying to chase these motherfuckers away because if they's like, hey, everyone over there is cussing, fuck that. Fine, get your nun cussing ass on. So, I'm a motherfucker and send that email to Amy. And also, don't let people know. Because in the last video where people go and booyah, I know folks are like, what the hell? What the hell's going on? Why is everyone saying that? We're having fun here. We're having fun. So, welcome to the party. I'm glad you're here. And uh, this is Glendon, and I'll see you on the good side.